Hi everyone, I'm Nicole Malakowski, Colonel United States Air Force Retired. I spent over 21 years as an officer and a fighter pilot in the United States Air Force. I had the honor of being amongst the first group of women to fly modern fighter aircraft, and I also served as the first woman pilot on the United States Air Force Thunderbirds. You know, by all descriptions, a lot of people would say, hey, that's a pretty successful career. And they'd ask me, you know, what's the secret to your success? How did you achieve those kind of elite levels of performance? And at the end of the day, it always comes down to the fact that I had amazing teachers. Teachers along the way who believed in my dream, no matter how big or complex or gnarly it may have seemed, these teachers believed in my dream as much as I did. I learned a long time ago that nothing of significance is ever accomplished alone. It takes teachers imparting knowledge, imparting skills, and even imparting character on young students and young minds in order for folks like me to achieve their dreams. You know, I was asked, you know, what do you think about teachers? What is it about teachers that are so special? And I thought, you know, back on my life, there have been some impactful moments and impactful teachers, and I just want to share a couple of those um, stories with you right now. It wasn't so much that teachers along the way taught me knowledge and skills and academic things. I mean, I needed those, right, in order to accomplish things, pass tests, achieve certain goals, um, find certain skills. But what it is about teachers that I think is special is I sit here now as, as a 46-year-old woman and a mother of 10-year-old twins, I think to myself, teachers made a difference in my life because of how they made me feel. How they made me feel. I remember in the fourth grade, Mrs. Adams, she believed in me. I was a very, very quiet, very introverted student, but I was good at spelling and I was good at writing and I was good at reading. But the idea of me ever putting myself out there in front of my classmates or my school to kind of highlight this skill was something that absolutely petrified me. And I remember in the fourth grade, it was the first year the big county spelling bee came along. And Mrs. Adams approached me during recess one day and she said, Nicole, I'd like you to represent our class in this spelling bee. I asked her what it entailed, and that's when I learned it meant standing on stage and talking out loud and spelling words, not only in front of my peers in the school, but in front of strangers and judges. And this idea that I would do that was not something I wanted to do. I didn't have the confidence. But over the next few days, Mrs. Adams kept encouraging me until finally I gave in, and I said, okay, I'm going to do it. She made me feel confident to get up on that stage and to give it a shot. And you know what? I won the spelling bee. In fourth grade, I realized that sometimes you just have to put yourself out there. She made me feel like I can do it. And the winning word was asterisk. Did you know there's a silent S in that word? You know, as I think forward there in junior high, I made the decision that I wanted to become a fighter pilot. I knew it was hard to become a fighter pilot. I knew it was an elite kind of job. I also knew at that time that it was against the law for women to fly fighter aircraft. But I stayed focused on that. And sometimes as I would go through junior high and high school and I would share my dream of becoming a fighter pilot, people would sometimes laugh. Women can't do that. It's too hard. Maybe you're not smart enough to do that. I was a student who was good grades-wide in math and in science but I struggled in math and in science. I felt that it was too hard. I felt that if I couldn't figure out the math and the science, how could I ever become a fighter pilot? And then I met my freshman year of high school geometry teacher, Mr. Tesla. When I told Mr. Tesla that I wanted to be a fighter pilot someday, he looked at me and said, great, what is it that a fighter pilot needs to know? And I knew math was part of it. Think back to watching Top Gun when you were a kid or maybe even a different flying type movie, and you understand, right, the art of the dogfight. What a fighter pilot does is all about geometry. It's all about three dimensions. And all of a sudden, Mr. Tesla would take these ideas and turn them into this aircraft dogfight for me, and the light bulb would go on. Mr. Tesla made me feel smart. He made me feel smart enough to pursue my dream of becoming a fighter pilot someday. And I can assure you, as someone who has flown in and out of combat safely and led my peers in and out of combat safely, math, science, geometry are vital to how we execute our mission. And then in high school, my junior year, 
I met an English teacher by the name of Mrs. St. Clair. You know, Mrs. St. Clair taught me how to organize my thoughts, how to make a persuasive speech. Everything that she taught me was everything I needed to know in order to interview, to get accepted for college scholarships, to get into the Air Force Academy, to persuade people that I was the right person to invest in, to serve my country and to become a fighter pilot someday. She would make me stand up in front of the class and persuade ideas, things I did believe in, and even persuading people towards maybe ideas that weren't actually, you know, of my own, right? Convincing people to believe in me. Mrs. St. Clair gave me my voice. She made me feel like I had a voice that was powerful. And then I found myself as a cadet at the United States Air Force Academy, where yet another English teacher would come into my life. Her name was Sue Ross. Sue Ross taught me how to have the confidence to stand in front of people and what it meant to story tell, what storytelling meant. And isn't it interesting that after my 21 year flying career came to an end, I found myself in the public speaking environment. 30 years ago, Sue Ross taught me how to effectively share my story. And now 30 years later, she lives less than two miles away and she helps me to this day with my speeches and my outlines that I give. You know, it's all about the knowledge that teachers impart, but I argue it's even more importantly about how teachers make you feel. They made me feel smart, confident. They made me feel that it was okay to dream big. They made me feel that my voice and my story had a place. Now, most importantly, right now, I am the mother of 10-year-old twins who have been online schooling in the fifth grade since last March. Nearly a year, our entire school district has had to transition. You all have had to endure the adversity and the challenges of this global pandemic. Online, hybrid, in-person, it is all very, very difficult right now. I want to give a personal shout out to District 38, El Paso County, Colorado, who is taking care of my kids. And as I got up this morning and thought about making this video for all of you and what I wanted to say, I asked my kids, how do your teachers right now in fifth grade online schooling during a global pandemic make you feel? My daughter, Nora, she said, my teachers make me feel calm. That's powerful stuff. She said, my teachers make me feel confident, right? They give her the confidence and the courage to believe in herself and her skills. I turned to my son, Garrick. I said, how do your teachers make you feel? He said, my teachers make me actually feel smart. And my son is someone who struggles with kind of mainstream schooling and focusing and concentrating. But to watch these teachers online tailor their approach to his unique needs is absolutely inspiring. Thank you for making my son feel smart. And the last thing he said, and I think this is the most important thing, he said, my teachers make me feel that I can do hard things. I'm his own mother, and I, I hope that I can make him feel that he can do hard things, but he connected that to his teachers. You, my son and my daughter, can do hard things because of the amazing teachers that you have in your life. And so I want to thank all of you, teachers, educators, school administrators, for what not only what you did for me as a kid, what you're doing for my own children, but what you're doing for our nation's children during a distinctly challenging and historic time. Educators really are excellent. You all have my deepest respect and my admiration. You're going to make it through this. Please stay safe and healthy, and thank you for everything that you do.